Straight as in. All right. Okay. Secretary of Pakistan for over three years and participated actively in high-level foreign policy discussions from December 2013 to March 2017. In presence, we have also Mr. Fakir Jazuddin. Saab. Fakir Jazuddin is a Pakistani historian, academic and business executive. From November 2007 to April 2008, he served at, as Punjab's interim, interim Minister for Culture, Tourism and Environment. And as the moderator of the event, we have Dr. Sul Baksh Dr. Sul Baksh is a professor of political science in the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, LUMS, since 2002. And before joining LUMS, he was at Khaid Azam University, where he taught for at least 22 years. So over to you, Dr. Okay. Uh, I think without uh, much discussion, we are going to start the proceedings. I welcome all of you, and particularly to the um, the two things I would like to say before uh, I request him to, to introduce the book. The first is that um, the research on Pakistan's foreign policy and also on Pakistan's security, which have been one of my uh, concerns since my graduate studies days, a long time back, is that uh, archival material is not available to us. Uh, if you want to do research on uh, what happened uh, in 1954, 55, when we became a member of um, CA2M Senso, the archives are not open. Uh, how we became a close friend of People's Republic of China and how we negotiated 1962 border agreement, 1963 border agreement with China. We don't find, uh, find archival material. Uh, there is a rule in many countries, particularly in the United States that I know about. Every 30 years, everything is out of the that is our limitation. We don't know much about what happened, who played what role, who said what, whose uh, opinion it was, for instance, that we had to launch um, Operation Gibraltar uh, in 1964. The second thing that I want to say is that, that what can substitute uh, that information are the biographies, eyewitnesses accounts of ambassadors. And I'm very <coughs> delighted that not one, but quite a few uh, such biographies have appeared in Pakistan. Uh, I wish uh, Aga Shahi Saab had one. I wish uh, Sam Zada Yukur Khan had one. I insisted on, uh, on, on the son of Sayyid Fida Hassan, who was with us uh, for some time, uh, that please get his notes published. And I'm very really glad that he did. Mm. Said Fidasan had played, you know, not your generation would not know anything about Fidasan. But I'm glad that the book is here in the library. Chaudhary Ezaz has made a tremendous contribution. I have not read the book, I have not been well, I have been traveling. So I was looking forward to finding time and doing my hand on the book, but I will read it and I will review it as well. 
is a great uh, service to uh, uh, the students of politics, the students of international relations, and uh, the students of Pakistan studies, as well as uh, students of Pakistan's history. That you know, by writing what you saw and explaining and leaving a record of that kind that nobody can dispute. And in your own lifetime, if somebody has to say something that this is not uh, right or this is not uh, 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 correct, you can always you can always uh, uh, correct the record if there is something. I think uh, uh, this is uh, going to be one of the great contributions. Uh, I've seen some of the reviews. This, this book was launched uh, at the Karachi Literature Festival day before yesterday, uh, which is uh, one of uh, the largest, not one of, but the largest gathering of Pakistan's intellectuals, academics, poets, artists, uh, literary figures. And not only that of Pakistan, but also from within the region, from all over the world, uh, and and it was you know it attracted a lot of people, and and, and it was discussed. So we are very grateful to you, sir, for sparing your time and uh, making gloves in Lahore uh, the place where we can discuss you. So I would like to uh, to request you. And the other thing that I would like to mention here before I request you to speak is that uh, when uh, Chaudhry Sahu was ambassador of, the, of Pakistan to the United States, uh, we uh, at LAMS had um, started a program with John Hopkins University that we will be having a, 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 a conference together, mm. uh, one year in Pakistan and one year in mm -hmm. the United States. And that was the inaugural conference we took to, to um, Washington DC and, and I was so delighted and I am so grateful to you that the ambassador arranged a big dinner for our delegation from Laos and uh, it had um, really matters as far as the Pakistani sector is concerned in Washington DC including former American ambassadors that had served in Pakistan and the distinguished members of American and Pakistani community. So we were truly honored, and uh, I have no words to really express my gratitude. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was the time I had met uh, to the for the first time. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank and you, sir. Uh, be in trouble. I mean, these are not the questions that you should be answering, but I'm simply on a last note. But please tell us. Uh, thank you. Your thank you, Professor. Thank you. Uh, my first word of um, gratitude must be to Law and Politics Society of the LAMS uh, for arranging this. Uh, and of course, uh, I have these two names uh, which were on the invitation of Zair Kayani and Zarak Asad Khan, but I understand there are many more, including my colleague Arama, who is, uh, who is an alumnus of, uh, of LAMS, but now working with ISA. And I think you brought probably some of them there. She very came well, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I tell you, she, she brought such a good, good name to, uh, to uh, the ISSI that we are very proud of her. You have Shia revival. 2006, nahi padi? Kaun ko padega ja ke Because that influenced the thinking of President Obama so much. Usme usne ye line liya tha ki ye Shia clergy is far more pragmatic than the Sunni clergy. To usne change gears and he started opening up to Iran. And just ke baad fir wo deal hui jisko Obama ne aake usne Trump ne aake is khatam kiya. And it's just by the way. Usi mein jab speeches ho rahi thi na sir, usi session mein. और सईद बाबा जी भी आए थे हमने उस दिन डिनर भी किया था सेपरेट था लेकिन वो फंक्शन में नहीं आए तो वो स्पीचेस में एक और मुसलफा है वो बहुत क्रिटिकल लिखती हैं पाकिस्तान के मुतालिक उनको पाकिस्तान की हर चीज खराब लगती है 
तो जब मैं तकरीर कर रहा था तो आधी तकरीर में वो उठ के चली गई लेकिन जाते जाते वो वली हसू को कहेगी कि तू ये सिर्फ पाकिस्तान की बात कर रहा है तो मैंने कहा आपने उनको बता देना था कि पाकिस्तान का सफीर अगर पाकिस्तान की बात नहीं करेगा तो फिर कौन करेगा एनी वे थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड आई एम ऑनर बाय दी प्रेजेंस ऑफ फर्स्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू फॉर एग्रीइंग टू मॉडरेट दिस सेशन यू आर वन ऑफ माय प्रेडिसेसर्स इन द आईएसएसआर सो यू हैव अ स्पेशल स्टीम इन माय हार्ट एंड देन ऑफ कोर्स आई एम ट्रूली ऑनर्ड बाय दी प्रेजेंस ऑफ कीर इजाजुद्दीन वन ऑफ आई एम अ टॉवरिंग पर्सनालिटी इन माय एस्टीमेशन and i have come to respect you so fondly uh, also because you were my directing staff at the national school of public policy which some people call as staff college pata hai na kahan hai staff college pata hai hmm yahi pe hai mall road pe hai wo senior bureaucrats ki training ke liye wo bana hua hai to he was directing staff there aur inse humne bahut kuch sikha aur अल्लाह ताला ने इनको ऐसा टैलेंट अता किया है माशाल्लाह ही इज एन एसेट फॉर अस और आई ऑफन आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव रीड हिज आर्टिकल्स इन डॉन कितने लोगों ने पढ़े हाथ खड़े करें ना हम क्या करें चलो रीजनेबली गुड नंबर बट जिन्होंने नहीं हाथ खड़ा किया है प्रॉमिस मी विद इन ए वीक आप इनका एक आध आर्टिकल जरूर पढ़ेंगे जाके सर देन यू विल डिस्कवर दी लेंथ and breadth and depth of his insights to hum bade shauk se padhte hain angrezi zara mushkil likhte hain lekin achhi likhte hain bahut maza aata hai thank you very much sir for your present sikandar shah sahab thank you for for being here sikandar shah sahab say i met him 2012 when he became for a while legal advisor of the foreign ministry and that's where we interacted i had returned after doing my ambassadorship in holland to inse phir hamara thoda sa उस वक्त से चला तो लेकिन एवरी वन सी मोबाइल यू ऑल्सो राइट राइट बिकॉज आई डू रीड योर परस्पेक्टिव वेन एवर यू यू कून एंड माई सर्कल ऑफ फ्रेंड्स ऑल्सो फैमिली एंड फ्रेंड्स ऑल्सो हैज मिस्टर खुर्शीद अनवर ये कोई बहुत हाई प्रोफाइल नहीं लेते हैं ये वो लोग हैं जिनके मतलब कहा जाता है कि ये पौधों की जड़ों की माने हैं जो पौधे की मजबूती की जमानत भी रखते हैं लेकिन साथ ही साथ किसी को नजर नहीं आते और पता नहीं चलने देते ही इज ए ग्रेट फ्रेंड वी हैव बीन क्लास फेलोस वी हिज रोल नंबर इन पी एफ कॉलेज सर गोदा वॉज इलेवन हंड्रेड माइंड वॉज इलेवन जीरो वन तो चल रहा है उस वक्त से हमारी दोस्ती एंड माई एल्डर ब्रदर डॉक्टर सजाद अहमद चौधरी इज ए मेटोलॉजी पी एच डी ही हैज कम बैक फ्रॉम ह्यूस्टन एंड माई वाइफ नाजिया सो आई विल इंट्रोड्यूस दी होल क्लैन टू यू Uh, thank you so much. It's it's good. Now, आपने पूछा कि किताब मैंने क्यों लिखी मैं उस पर भी आता हूँ बट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू वट इंस्पायर्स मी द मोस्ट आई गिव लेक्चर्स नाउ दीज डेज अलॉट अलॉट एक्चुअली फोर टू फाइव लेक्चर्स अ वीक मुख्त जगहों पर ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन में यूनिवर्सिटीज में बट नथिंग प्लीज इज मी मोर दैन इंटरेक्टिंग विद स्टूडेंट्स एंड यंगस्टर्स हमने अपने इंस्टीट्यूट में भी कुछ प्रोग्राम्स किए हैं और जब स्टूडेंट्स और यंगस्टर्स अपना सवाल पूछते थे ना तो तबीयत खुश हो जाती स्टीरियो टाइप नहीं होगा आउट ऑफ बॉक्स होगा फ्रेश थिंकिंग होगी एंड देर फोर आई एम वेरी प्लीज दैट वंस अगेन आई एम टॉकिंग इट्स नॉट अ वेरी बिग क्राउड आई हैव स्पोकन टू क्राउड विच आर लाइक फोर फाइव हंड्रेड एंड इट्स इट्स रियली रिफ्रेशिंग टू टू स्पीक टू और आप तो मेरे ख्याल में यू विल बी बी फार मोर aware because uh, lamske students uh, uh, have a special uh, reputation so to uh, to you uh, to to the youth uh, uh, i would like to uh, recommend the first three chapters of my book kitab abhi bahar hogi le lijiyega nahi lenge to library mein zarur le lijiyega aur library se ye check out kar sakenge aur usme pehla teen chapters hain early life becoming a sergodian and turbulence why am i showing that to you because at this stage of your life you will relate more to the turbulence part the turbulence that arises out of what should i make my life out of 
out of the uncertainty about the career I am going to ultimately choose and how do I make it happen. And you will discover, I went out to become a fighter pilot in PA College Sri Gauda. Oh, subo wo tarana sunte te, aise surut karte te, or samajte te, hama bhi jahaz uda raha hai is pa. I got deflected to University of Engineering and Technology in the Electrical Department. But I ended up in the Foreign Service of Pakistan. Could have I predicted such a trajectory? Not really. The point I'm making is, that there is a, another way by which you can chart your course in life. What is that? And I'll share, you, share with you my experience. My, my sense is that at this stage of life, you should only focus on learning and adopting the principles and values that will ultimately guide you through the life. Let me elaborate. Let me elaborate. There is a direct correlation between the principles, the choices, and consequences. We all make choices. We all make decisions. And every choice has consequences. But sometimes, when our choices that we have made produce good results, we say, ah, I took a right decision. But when they go bad, I tend to blame the environment or the activity atmosphere or the genes or somebody. Yaad rakhye, every choice that you make will produce consequences and you have to accept ke wo consequences aap ne put. Pakistan agar gya tha, aaj se kai baras pehle Amerika ke camp mein, to hamne choice ki di. Aaj badi behas ho rie ke Pakistan Amerika ke camp mein jaye ya Chin ke camp mein jaye. Jis bhi camp mein jayenge, that will be your choice. Aap America ko blame na ki jayega, ya Chin ko blame na ki jayega. It's a choice you have made, and so be prepared for the consequences. Yehi dunia mein apni zindagi ka bhi asool hai. Isliye principles are important. So they say that when you want to make your choices, in order to in order to enable you to make your choices, focus on the principles and values on it. Because they will guide you that if your choices are fine, then the consequences will be fine. Now let me, sorry, this is a little philosophical. Uh, because it is important for you uh, to, to know that when you uh, pick one end of the stick, you automatically pick the other end. You will have to take the other end of the stick. Okay? अब वो प्रिंसिपल्स क्या हैं वो जो वो कहते हैं ना कि एक अल्लामा इकबाल का पता नहीं आप में से कितने वो पढ़ते भी होंगे कि नहीं होंगे लेकिन उर्दू 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 किस किसने पढ़ी है ओ माशाल्लाह माशाल्लाह बड़ी अच्छी बात है वेरी गुड फिर तो मैं बोलूंगा खुद ही को कट बुला लेना आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव रिफ्लेक्टेड ऑन इट I have never found a better explanation of the balance between your own choices and destiny. Aapke apna ikhtiyar aur jo aapki takdeer hai. Wo jo Greek quotation hai na, your character is your destiny. Jo aapka character hoga, agar mein ek sacha insaan hoon, तो आप ये देखेंगे कि वही मेरी तकदीर बन जाएगा और अगर मैं झूठा और डिसीटफुल हूं तो मेरी वही तकदीर बन जाएगी सो so, ये इंपॉर्टेंट है सो व्हाट डिड आई डू सो व्हेन आई वेंट थ्रू द एजुकेशन फेज आई वाज लकी टू एंड अप इन पीए कॉलेज ऑफ गोदा व्हिच वाज नॉट अबाउट एजुकेशन अलोन आई वाज आई वाज अ गुड स्टूडेंट ही वाज आल्सो अ गुड स्टूडेंट बट दैट डजंट रियली मैटर व्हाट मैटर वाज दैट दे फोकस्ड ऑन कैरेक्टर बिल्डिंग इसलिए वो स्कूल जो है हमारे लिए थोड़ा डिफरेंट है एंड आई लर्न सम सम इनिशियल प्रिंसिपल्स व्हिच हैव सर्व्ड देम वेल आप भी उस फेस से गुजर रहे हैं आई लर्न दैट वन हैज टू परसीवियर नो मैटर हाउ चैलेंजिंग द सिचुएशन इज आई लर्न दैट आई मस्ट ऑनर माय कमिटमेंट्स एंड माय वर्ड इफ आई वांट टू बी ट्रीटेड एज अ मैन ऑफ इंटीग्रिटी आई लर्न दैट आई मस्ट एम हाई जरा ऊंचा सोचिए कॉम्प्रोमाइज छोटी चीज पे ना करें Your life is too precious, and you can make really the most of it. So, our, so, college's motto was 
بلکہ اب چونکہ شعر و شاعری کی بات ہو گئی تو وہ تن دیئے بعد مخالف سے نہ گھبرایا وہ کاب یہ تو چلتی ہے تو بھائی کمال کر دیا لمس نے تو دل جیت لیا ورنہ تو ہم اردو بھول گئے تھے ہم نے خرشید اور میں نے ہم نے ایرو ڈینامکس پڑھی ہے آپ کبھی جہاز کی شیپ دیکھتے ہیں آپ دیکھتے ہیں نا وہ ایسے کر کے ایرو فائلک ہوتی ہے تو جب جہاز وہ ایک وینچوری سی بن جاتی ہے ایسے جہاز ہوتا ہے تو اس کے اوپر جو پریشر ڈیفرینشل ہے نیچے پریشر زیادہ ہو جاتا ہے اوپر کم ہوتا ہے تو اس سے اس کو لفٹ ملتی ہے لیکن ایوری لفٹ ہیز ایک ڈریگ کمپوننٹ ہوئی اب بھائی جنہیں تو فیزکس پڑھی ہوئی یہ بتا سکتے ہیں یا ہوت میں چاہ سے آپ کو بتاؤں کہ کس طریقے سے ہر جو آپ کو لفٹ دے گی وہاں پہ ڈریگ تو وہ علامہ اکبر کہتے ہیں تم دیئے بعد مخالف سر ہیں بعد مخالف یہ آزان یہ تو چلتی ہے تجھے اونچا اڑانے کے لیے so it's important کہ آپ aim high I've also learned I've also learned that hard work pays and no knowledge ever goes based I've also learned that man gets what he strives for. Very important. In our college, there was a book that was written, Laisa lil insani illa masa. Man will not get what until for what he strives for. He will not get a plate. 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 This is an abdi asool. I have learned that. And I have also learned that I must stand up for my companions. Mare hao bohat zyada tha ye camaraderi ka kaha jata tha and cherish the teamwork. Why? Because working together is far more productive than solo performers. Hamari kaum mein solo performers hote hain. Hamne teamwork ka sikha hi nahi hai, lazati bhi sikhi hai ko usse kaum mein kaise unchi hoti hain. Ab hum kabhi kabhi wo جاپانی کو دیکھتے ہیں تو ہمیں ایسے لگتا ہے کہ شاید یہ مطلب ہے وہ انڈویجولی شاید اتنا تیز نظر آئے لیکن کولیکٹیولی they do wonders and I have also learned that a life constructed on principles is far more superior than the one that is built on deceit or lies or even expediencies اب جیسے جیسے if you go along in the book پڑھئے گا کوشش کیجئے گا چاہے مجھ سے مفت لے کر پڑھائیں لیکن پڑھئے گا ضرور کہ you will discover that it's not my story alone I've not discussed personalities by the way except in praise of some it's about the story of Pakistan and its foreign policy and my own personal story dovetails with it تو اس میں for instance کچھ چیزیں آپ کو مزے گی you might be able to relate to some of them 9-11 happened when you must be very 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 young all of you so um uh, but you know I was there in New York and I had no idea how impactful will this incident be on the geopolitics of the world but more so on, on Pakistan so I have discussed that uh, in my in my book or oh, for that matter when Mumbai terrorist attacks happened in 2008 or Pathan Court terrorist attack happened in 2016. Why is it and how is it that they wrecked the peace process between India and Pakistan? This is the study. This is our country. Look, India is so big and we are thinking about it. We should be friends with it. And when the peace process was going on, at this time I was director of South Asia. So I used to travel to India a lot. I mean in one city or the other every month. And a lot of میرا یہ خیال تھا کہ آپ کے پیس پروسس رکے گا نہیں کبھی بھی لیکن رک گیا so you got to know کہ جو آپ سوچتے ہیں ضروری ہے نہیں کہ وہ چیز اسی طریقے سے چلے you would also discover کہ why is Kashmir dispute such an intractable issue یا یہ کہ جو پاکستان کی زندگی ہے سکسیسیو رولرز نے اس کو کیسے امپیکٹ کیا ہے فرم ایوب خان تو زیاد و مشرف ہیں ادرز سو آئے ان دی اپی لاغ ٹوڈز دی اینڈ آئے ریز ای نمبر آف قویسٹنز اور وہ بڑے امپورٹنٹ ہیں بکاوز جو دی کورس آف مائی لائف آئی کیم اکراس دوز قویسٹنز سم آف دی قویسٹنز ور سچ میں جب امریکہ میں بہت شوقین تھا اس بات کا کہ میں جا کے تھنک ٹینک سے بات کروں تو میں 
बोस्टन से कैलिफोर्निया तक तकरीबन हर थिंक टैंक में जाता था तकरीर करता था यूनिवर्सिटियों में करता था तो मैं नोट्स जो लेता था वो क्वेश्चन के लेता था आंसर्स के नहीं जो मेरे आंसर्स है वो नहीं आंसर्स तो मैंने देने क्वेश्चन लोग क्या पूछ रहे सो आई ट्राई टू एड्रेस तो वो लोगों ने क्या सवाल पूछे क्वेश्चन लाइक वट इज दी पर्पज फॉर द्रिएशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान या ये के लिए जो पोलिटिकल सिस्टम हमने अडॉप्ट किया हुआ है हैज इट सर्व अस वेल या कि वाई इज पाकिस्तान सच ए मिस अंडरस्टूड कंट्री ऑल ओवर दर्ल्ड एंड वाई इज आर इमेज वर्स देन आर रियलिटी एंड वेर इज दंट्री हैडेड and what can bring it back to the vision of its founder ikar so you'll find all these answers there you'll read all these answers there ab main aata hu sir jo aapka sawal tha ki why did i write this book bas iske baad main khatam karne lagu tha ki bachon ne aage jana bhi hoga ek writer hai aur mera bada favorite hai mere bachche kehte hain aap bahut usko misal dete hain stephen kavi तो उसने कहा कि लाइफ ए फुलफिलिंग एंड रिच लाइफ शुड एड्रेस फोर फेजेस आपने सच पढ़ी हुई है फोर फेजेस वो कौन सी है सुनाऊ आपको टू लिव एज वी ऑल डू टू लर्न एज यू आर डूइंग नाउ टू सर्व एज सच इलस्ट्रियस मैन हैव डन एंड टू लीव ए लेक्सी टू लीव ए लेक्सी to live to learn to serve and leave a legacy this book gentlemen and ladies is my legacy you call it contribution i call it my legacy because i owe it to the future generations to let them know what is it that happened and why how did i see it you don't have to agree with everything the beauty of inexact sciences is that there will always be more than two views it's not 2 plus 2 equal to 4 no in exact sciences may you will always have a different and that's the beauty uh, of it so my my final uh, advice would be uh, that while our own generation has not really lived up to the high expectations of us but you are the future of pakistan you are the next generation and you can make it happen create a niche for yourself stand up and be counted not for any political party or any political leader but for the principles and values that you will under that will underpin your life may you achieve all that you want to thank you so much thank you again lps thank you very much thank you god bless you thank you now the night to invite uh, kirtan and things are um i wish you you knew about this man he is uh, I think one of the failing, I'm sure not the one, the failing generation of the classicists, classicists who have um, studied history, uh, who have been to archives, who study art history. The multiple books on multiple subjects. I'm very glad that I've read few of them. Uh, that that gave uh, John Lee some of the data. But then, one thing that I I would like to to say is that you know there's long, uh, very long history of his family, and I think there must be a seminar. There must be some studies of uh, the family of the Fakirs, and his his book. Uh, I think I sent him a note as well. I found about the Fakirs when I read uh, just once uh, uh, just one things. history of the punjab the history of the punjab is the most fascinating yeah history and his latest book on and the fakirs in uh, in, the, in, in the punjab uh, that's right uh, abdurban it's fascinating dr saab inka ghar jo hai wo museum hai i i, I just kabhi aapko mauka mile to jaiyega fakir khana museum bhi hai bhati gate mein andar lekin inka ghar bhi museum hai that <laughs> During winters, I take uh, uh, tours of uh, the Wall City. I walk around. I start from Bhati Gate, and then end up from Rang Mahal and all these areas. I do it about four or five times. 
And one time I was told that this is for Kirtan and this is a museum and this open all the time. Without any permission and without anybody uh, telling me that, that you know, and this is not, you, you have to seek permission. I just went in. And that was many years back. He said that, Dr. Sam, you come back, you can see anything. Uh, they, you know, the archival material that they have at the Fakir Khan, and I understand that the library that uh, uh, Yasab has is quite remarkable. So I, I, it is our honor and a great pleasure to have you here, sir. Please. Thank you so much. Tell us something to Ambassador Zaz Chaudhry Saab and uh, the Executive Committee of LPS. Uh, thank you very much indeed for this um, distinction of being invited here. I should confess that I have a, an enduring relationship with LUMS because I was teaching here management communications and financial accounting many, many years ago, probably before your parents were born. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I <laughs> took the first class in the new campus, uh, in the new building, the Mr. Block. And it was the first time uh, the walls were still wet and uh, the roof was leaking, but we had to open. And so uh, I was privileged at one stage because people like uh, uh, faculty that now Dr. Jim Shade, et cetera, were abroad, they, um, uh, on training, uh, gaining their doctor uh, doctoral theses, I took 40 sessions out of the first 120 in the first term. So I uh, had, I saw more of the students than I did of my own wife and family, you know, very much to their consternation. Probably relief, but anyway. Um, Ambassador Chaudhary, our lives have um, overlapped in a number of ways. I knew your wife, Nadia, and we're delighted to see you here as a youngster. When her father and he sent us up, and I worked together between 1974 and 79, in the National Fertilizer Corporation. Uh, Mr. Barbara Lee at that time, I remember, was the chairman, and he called me into his office and he said, They have addressed me as the chairman of the Natural Fertilizer Corporation. <laughs> and, uh, you can understand this. Natural Fertilizer Corporation. <laughs> I said they could have used another four-lettered word for urea. <laughs> <laughs> so we were there together. 30 years later, Azaz and I met at the National Management College, as he's just explained to you, where he'd come to attend the National Management course uh, prior to promotion, and where I was a member of the directing staff handling international relations. If he and other participants from the Foreign Office felt it was impertinent for a chartered accountant to be guiding them, on international relations, they were too diplomatic to let me feel it. At Edison College, where I joined as a principal in 2008, um, I discovered that a predecessor as principal, Mr. Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman Sa, had been Ezaz's principal at PA of Sirkoda. Ezaz and I met again after his appointment as foreign secretary, and then yet again as, uh, uh, after Ezaz's appointment as our ambassador to the United States. I knew him then, but even better after reading his eminently readable diplomatic footprints. It's more than a memoir, although that's what it says on the cover. It's more than a memoir. It is a textbook on international relations. And anyone in the Foreign Office who does not memorize it should be expelled from the service. <laughs> Rather than dealing with the chronology of Ambassador Ezaz Chaudhry's career, uh, because it's all available in the book, and I heartily, earnestly recommend that you do read it. Um, it's a lengthy book, but it's worth the investment, and you're young enough to invest it. I, at my age, can do it, and you certainly at yours should. So rather than dealing with the chronology of his life, I'd prefer to ask him to speak and to respond on aspects of our bilateral relations with certain critical countries. Do you need a sheet of paper? Oh, no. You're well organized. <laughs> All right. I'm going to touch uh, upon our bilateral relations because I think that's what matters to students amongst you who are dealing with politics and who are dealing with law because one cannot be divorced from the other. So 
I will, and I think it would be pointless for us to go back into proto history and, and, and know what the Foreign Office was like at uh, you know, the 1950s, 60s, 70s. We have a number of luminaries, and I endorse entirely Dr. Sutt's observation that uh, <clears throat> not enough is written about uh, the history and written using reliable archival material. Uh, when I written, wrote a book called uh, The White House of Pakistan, it was based on Nixon's papers and Kissinger's papers. And um, the book was published, and now the original documents are given over to the uh, Institute. Um, when I was researching there, uh, and the book came out, and it dealt with Nixon's foreign policy between 69 and 74, and it particularly during the secret visit that Kissinger made to China through us, with, uh, through our good offices, in 1971, July 9th to the 11th and then um, the Bangladesh War. So I had all of this archival material and I uh, published the book. And the then cabinet secretary, Javed Masood, called me and he said, Ji, ma apne wo kitab bhi kiya, kati, ha. Ji, maine archive, archive se baat kar liya. They make them available to you. Aap jai. I was delighted, I saw Mars. If the Americans could release it within 30 years, I could you know, benefit from our own archives. I go there, Dr. that. And they said, Kitty, you have to do it. I said, Kitty, it's now 2012 or something. And uh, I'd like, can I see anything in you know, a 30 years rule of the hat or anything about 1970s onwards? And he goes, Oh, lady, me. I said, But what's the latest date that you have declassified your material? He said, Simon Commission. I said, It's 1929, yeah. He said, No, it's about the Kiaini. So you can't expect us to write history based on 1929. So these are, you know, realities. And Dr. Sir, you're absolutely right. This is, but that is why this big book becomes so important. And I'm not going to ask uh, Ambassador on four or five countries, which I believe to be of critical significance to us. The first is the United States. Then I'll deal with China, Russia, and India, and then. We, I'll conclude my questions with uh, the references that you made in your epilogue to the seven imperatives that you see. Let's start with the United States. You mentioned, sir, that we've had a roller coaster relationship. You've also interacted with Joe Biden mm -hmm. when he was vice president mm -hmm. uh, to Barack Obama. Now he is the president. So, how do you see Joe Biden, the man who refuses to talk? to somebody in Banigala, <laughs> whose phone is out of order. Um, how do you see, now that Biden is the president, how do you see the next trajectory of US-Pakistan relations? Because Biden, unless he drops dead, which is quite possible, by the way, um, the reason they're keeping him alive is because they're terrified that Kamala Harris will come in as the president. <laughs> so. How do you see the trajectory of Pakistan-US relations for the remainder of Biden's uh, term and beyond? Unless Trump comes in. <laughs> Please. All right. Um, <clears throat> there is no doubt that Pakistan-US relationship has seen ups and downs, and we call it like to call it roller coaster. And it is mainly because of. Uh, mismatch of expectations. Uh, Pakistanis feel that if one of them has become a friend, then he should be a friend of all his life. Friend in need is a friend in need. Americans don't think like that. It's a super power. They say that when we converge our interests, we will, and when we don't do it, we will not do it. We will not do it. और जब वो हट जाते हैं तो हम एकदम से परेशान हो जाते हैं कि यार ये क्या हुआ ये तो हमारे वो बनने थे तो देवफो इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर आस टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट अमेरिका इज सुपर पार एंड इट विल बिहेव अकॉर्डिंग टू व्हाट इट्स इंटरेस्ट डिमांड एंड नॉट व्हाट आर इंटरेस्ट्स आर दैट दैट बेसिकली मींस दैट व्हेन बाइडेन इज देयर वी विल हैव टू फाइंड सम काइंड ऑफ रेलेवेंस some kind of relevance in the eyes of the Americans in order for them to pay attention to us. Now, from Afghanistan, they have walked, moved out. 
I hear that they are now planning to move out of the Middle East also, so even Arabs are perturbed, where would, where, where would it end? So at that, at this stage, at this stage, I believe a new opening has actually occurred. The opening is that instead of a securitized relationship, a relationship based on how we see the security of each other, security interests, we move away from the G to G, government to government relationship, to P to P, people to people relationship. Mm -hmm. Because despite all that roller coaster ride, people to people contacts have survived mm -hmm. and actually thrived. Be it education, be it agriculture, or IT, or industry, it has always been. And even today, America is our largest trading partner with trade surplus in our favor. So my, my sense is that if our government is, is smart and low on rhetoric, low on rhetoric, not the kind of statement that we often like to make, you know, if then our, the trajectory of Pakistan's relation with the United States will become more steady than it is. But if we keep expecting that Biden must call our Prime Minister and only then the relationship will grow, it will not. That's not how it happens. And you don't want a negative relevance with the US. You want a positive relevance only. And that can only happen. You remember that in agriculture, there are so many seed varieties, etc. This is the rest of the things. So I believe it's time to shift. And if you haven't shifted, the relationship is going to suffer many more lows. In essence, if I was to interpret your statement, what you're saying is that we have moved away from a unipolar world, which was dominated by the United States, and this is before the emergence, uh, the public emergence of China. I'm not saying that China was not strong enough, but I'm saying before the public emergence of China, and before this renaissance that is taking place in Russia, um, that the unipolar world is no longer relevant, and therefore what we should do is to distance ourselves and look, as the Americans do, at our own interests yeah. as being paramount. Yeah. Would that be right, sir? I absolutely agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, look, can I move now? Because I, I'm really offering these to you, uh, students, as the audience, as a framework for you to then to formulate your own questions on specific areas of our bilateral relations with these countries. Let's move to China. China is um, our iron brother, you know, all sorts of uh, uh, rhetoric is used about them. I had written a piece once, which um, I found came to haunt me. It was, uh, how many of you read um, The China-Pakistan Axis by Andrew Small? Yes. You have? Okay. It begins with a quotation, and I was honored that it happened to be mine, okay? In which I said that Pakistanis love China for what China can do for Pakistan. Okay? Pakistanis love China for what China can do for Pakistan. The Chinese love Pakistan despite what they do to themselves. <laughs> so, as far as China is concerned, I'm going to ask you a direct question, and uh, you can be diplomatic, sir, but I, I think the students would expect a degree of uh, openness on this and uh, candor. The CPC has been much touted as being a game changer, and it's going to be something that is going to transform our economy, etc. It's been in the, you know, it's been on the ground for at least what five, seven years now, mm. and it seems to have slowed down. Um, are the Chinese waiting for the Sharif brothers to come back into power so that they might revive CPC? Because in my mind, and having watched it over the years. The close association between the Chinese government and the CP, through the CPC and the former chief minister here, the closeness was so, so obvious that so many concessions that were given, not only to industries which were being set up, not only to Bada, but even to units that were being sponsored by the chief minister. And I'm talking about this hideous. Uh, overhead railway uh, uh, system. Fine. He, he made it, and I, I know there are no secrets. He made it, and when we asked him, Underground? 
ਕਿਸੇ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਬੰਦਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੀ ਵਿਖਾਵਾ ਦਿਸ ਵਾਸ ਇਟਸ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟ ਆਨਸਰ ਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਗੋਟ ਰੋ ਵੂਡ ਯੂ ਥਿੰਕ ਹੀ ਵੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਟੂ ਪੇ ਲੈ ਮਾਮਸ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਥੈਨ ਸਡਨਲੀ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਡਿਮਾਰਕੇਟਡ ਲਿਸਟ ਆਫ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਸ ਇਨ ਸੀਪੀਸ ਮੂਵਡ and said yeah yeah we will include the orange line as well which are you i goes into the original list cpc is not a finite set of products it's an umbrella and we can include anything under it right so i'm going to ask you this question sir mm-hmm. how do are the chinese waiting for something to happen to revive the cpc now with this question sir please you know Can we take few questions together from us well can i sit, we'll do it with this and then make your notes and then you can ask because not all of you will ask questions on the same topic so okay. Okay, with you with you respect sir right. how about that pehle to main ye kahunga ki aapne bada acha kaha ki don't give me a diplomatic answer usse mujhe ye laga ki it means that diplomacy is nothing but hypocrisy so no. give me a straight answer so it also could mean that diplomatic me being diplomatic means that you uh you are not saying what you are actually saying uh, okay. <laughs> so i can be candid so i am no more, no more in the government it's so i can i can be candid <laughs> but so but let me tell you let me tell you that our relationship with china has transcended the the coming and going of governments Excellent. in both countries Excellent. in both countries even when we were part of the cto and cento humne china ke sath apne bridges rakhe the और वो आज भी है आई डोंट थिंक एनी गवर्नमेंट कैन टर्मिनेट दोज कॉन्टेक्ट हुआ ये था कि सी पैक जब हुआ तो इट वॉज नॉट बिकॉज हमने को बहुत जबरदस्त काम किया था इट वॉज ऑल्सो बिकॉज को इंसिडेंटली को इंसिडेंटली वेल शी केम टू पार इन ट्वेंटी थर्टीन ही थॉट दैट ही वुड ओवर हीटेड थी इकोनॉमी इन ऑर्डर टू चेंज द प्लेयर्स फ्रॉम एक्सपोर्ट लेट ग्रोथ ही सेट दैट आई विल डाइवर्सिफाई एंड मोबलाइज द डोमेस्टिक कंज्यूमर्स तो वेस्टर्न चाइना को डेवलप करना पड़ा जब वेस्टर्न चाइना को डेवलप करना पड़ा तो उन्होंने कहा कि वो तो वहां से इट्स सच ए लॉन्ग वे 5000 किलोमीटर टू ईस्टर्न कोस्ट एंड देन 8000 किलोमीटर थ्रू मलाक्का स्ट्रेट दैट्स लाइक 13000 किलोमीटर वेयर एज हियर इट वाज ओनली 2000 किलोमीटर सो इट मेड सेंस टू हैव सी पैक चाइना पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर इट मेड्स परफेक्ट सेंस सो उन्होंने आके कहा कि अच्छा हम ये करते हैं तो यहां जो इस वक्त गवर्नमेंट थी वो कह रही थी कि सबसे ज्यादा इस वक्त हमारा मसला है लोड शेडिंग का energy became the first choice and infrastructure the second choice to ye kaam shuru ho gaya to chinese ne us waqt ye kaha usme likha hua hai agar hamara jo long term framework mein dekhe to unhone kaha tha ki jab aap ye kaam kar rahe ho to kindly aap apne special economic zones banate jaiye ke sath sath taaki jab ye phase mukammal ho to hum aake industry lagaye yahan pe kyunki humne apni industry shift kar di lekin wo jab kaam ho gaya humne zones nahi banaye i can't put the blame to नवाज शरीफ गवर्नमेंट और इमरान खान गवर्नमेंट और ये ये हमारी कलेक्टिव फेलियर थी हमारे डिपार्टमेंट्स की भी फेलियर थी हमारे सब की फेलियर हमने नहीं सोचा और उसका नतीजा ये निकला कि आपके पास जब चाइना ने इंडस्ट्री शिफ्ट की तो वो लाउस जा रहे हैं कंबोडिया जा रहे हैं म्यांमार जा रहे हैं बांग्लादेश जा रहे हैं थाईलैंड जा रहे हैं पाकिस्तान नहीं आ रहे कैसे आए आपने तो वो बनाई कोई नहीं है अब आके बड़ी देर के बाद Uh, हमें इस बात का एहसास हुआ कि ये जो फेज टू थी इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन की ये तो अपने की कोई नहीं है कुछ पॉलिटिक्स भी बीच में आ गई आई थिंक दिस गवर्नमेंट के शुरू के जो पीरियड थे उसमें उतना ज़्यादा रबता चीनियों के साथ नहीं रखा गया जितना रखना चाहिए था तो रिजल्ट में चाइनीज आपको पता है बहुत ऑप्टिक्स पर गौर करते हैं तो उन्होंने एकदम से वो जैसे कहते हैं ना कि वो देवर वेटिंग टू सी के क्या करें बट आई थिंक दैट दैट ग्राउंड हैज़ बिन रिकवर्ड बाई दी गवर्नमेंट अब उन्होंने जाके उनको एहसास दिला दिया कि नहीं नहीं हमारा एंड चाइनीज एक्चुअली वांट टू डील विद यू सो आई डू सी ए फ्यूचर देखिए चाइनीज केम टू इन्वेस्ट इन योर कंट्री इन 2014 व्हेन नो कंट्री वाज विलिंग टू डू सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ द टेररिज्म थ्रेट एंड देयरफॉर द चाइनीज विल ऑलवेज बी देयर चाइनीज आपकी जरूरत है और हम चाइना की जरूरत है इट्स नॉट दैट इट्स अ फ्री यू नो राइट चाइनीज को हम एक्सेस दे रहे हैं टू इंडियन ओशन टू अरेबियन सी व्हिच इज व्हिच इज अ बिग डील बिकॉज़ एंड गवादर बिकॉज अमेरिकन उसके खिलाफ एक पूरा कर्टन बना रहे हैं इसको कहते हैं कंटेनमेंट आर्क बना रहे हैं यू आर फंक्ट अलाउंग दैट टू बी पंक्चर बाई दी चाइनीज एंड दो फॉर आई सी स्टिल ए ब्राइटर फ्यूचर फॉर पाकिस्तान चाइना रिलेशन रिगार्डलेस हु इज इन पार इन जी सर जी सर रशिया 
and uh, he went to Kanawha. <laughs> he went to Kanawha, and he spent three hours. Uh, I asked him this question in our bilateral discussion, you know, uh, emails. Yeah, and he stayed for three hours. I was fascinated because here was a man who went on the first day of World War III <laughs> in Moscow. <laughs> and <clears throat> instead of spending an hour, and I would have thought that the Russian president, rather like the American president, when they attacked uh, Abbottabad and uh, uh, they uh, removed Osama bin Laden, most of you will have seen that picture of uh, Barack Obama and um, this um, Hillary Clinton and the other chiefs all sitting there and riveted by the live coverage of four helicopters landing, one got destroyed, landing to kill one man. And here, Putin is unleashed the Armageddon against the Ukraine. And he's got all the time in the world to spend three hours <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> now, allowing for interpretation and in interpreters, that's one and a half, you know, I speak in Russian, ambassador speak, replies in English, and I, it comes back to me and back and so uh, cut that by half, so well, even on one and a half hours yard, over lunch, okay, what did they discuss? I think uh, uh, Russia, that's my assessment. As you rightly indicated, we have moved from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. And uh, mm, apart from China, Russia believes that it must also come to the bigger table and, and take a, claim a seat there. It is already developing, uh, uh, you know, arms control, understandings have already broken down. Middle East, maybe they were on the opposite sides. So uh, Russia was slowly and gradually considering to lean towards ish or usne agar president she or putin ki statement dekhe joint statement on the sidelines of the winter olympics you would discover ki kitna zyada uske andar meat hai alongside that he has allowed its area of influence which is central asia to connect up to pakistan and go towards the arabian sea etc pehle jo ijazat nahi dete the inko to it makes sense for russia in order not to get diplomatically isolated because German, because trans-Atlantic alliance has once again mm -hmm. been concretized that Europe and America are cut off, so that's why it was necessary for them that they make their own place here. So I think Russians are uh, believe that Pakistan in the future is a good place for our future. You know, our access to warm waters through these Asians, provided Afghanistan also becomes uh, uh, peaceful and stable. So uh, uh, I think the Russians ne sirf aise hi nahi de diya unko. Abhi to apne dekha ko project bhi nahi nikla. Even North South gas pipeline bhi nahi ban saka. But I think the long term they are thinking of uh, partnering with. And that's why they allowed, despite uh, reservations by India, to Pakistan to come join SCO. So ye puri jo Eurasian fraternity bana rahe hain usme wo pakistan ko bhi figure in kar rahe hain positively it's a good thing for us Absolutely. and russians are smart because india which is now clearly in the american camp the, the russians have seen that india uh, is uh, still engaged with them and uh, and there's not a thing that america can do about it Absolutely. because we have entered into an age and that's what i i say in every talk that i give we have entered into an age where each country pursues its own national interests. And that's what we should do, period. Ke dusra kya kar rahe? Abhi, UAE thought that it should connect to Israel now. It's time. Unna ne socha ke wo Palestine issue and all that. Because unka khayar tha ke ye amara national interest hai. Similarly, Pakistan should be very clear. Jo hamare national interests mein hai, that's why I'm against Pakistan landing in any camp. I believe कि इसका ये मतलब नहीं है कि रूस के करीब हो गए हैं तो वी शुड बी अवे फ्रॉम चाइना फ्रॉम यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स नॉट एट ऑल यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स के साथ तो आपके बड़ी पुरानी हिस्ट्री है कल्चरल एफिलिएशन है नहीं जा सकते और जाना भी नहीं चाहिए हमाकत होगी सो विद एवरी मेजर पावर पाकिस्तान शुड हैव इट्स कॉन्टेक्ट एंड इट्स रिलेशनशिप बेस्ड ऑन आर नेशनल इंटरेस्ट एज वी परसीव इट सो इट्स नॉट ऑन आई दल इट्स नॉट इधर ऑफ नॉट सॉरी you want? You want the question? In Kassar, I think they have to go to the next class or what something. Time? In yeah. Kassar, what time? Around 4.40, 4.45. Yeah. 
Okay, well, minutes. give me three minutes. Yeah. All right? Three and three then minutes. you can kick us, uh, you can kick us out. <laughs> okay. What is your question? Just one second. That is India. Uh, the, the neighbor we can't live with and the neighbor we can't live without. Um, we talked about the roller coaster with that. It's in fact even more um, uh, up and down with India. And I'm going to share with you, because none of you were uh, there, uh, it's a vision of history, and Ambassador has been a witness to history itself. Um, Mr. Vajpayee came to India, uh, to Lahore, on the famous Bas Yatra in 1999. And when he came, I was privileged, I happened to be in a governor's house, and he made a speech, and he said, Ke jang na hone na hone and because he was a shayar, for him, rang and jang, I was amused and interested because Ambassador, in his book, was a witness to Mr. Modi's unexpected visit to Raibind. Am I right, sir? True. And in the book, you mentioned here, and I'm going to read it out very briefly. By the time our briefings ended, Modi seemed introspective, gazing at the large table that lay between the two delegations as if he was reflecting some deeper thought. Janko zang na hone denge, a jang nahi hogi. So he picked up Vajpayee's remark and he came out with this. So, many of you have asked, Taji, zang lag gaya hame ya jang hogi? Jang to sahab nahi hogi. Uski wajah ye hai ke we are way too close, we are both nuclear armed or September 20, in 2016, they claimed that we had done a strike, but it was not. But in February 2019, they actually did a strike. And they thought that if we could do this work in nuclear overhang, if America can do it in far-off lands, why can't Pakistan? We can't do the same thing with Pakistan. But it so happened that we were lucky that Pakistan Air Force down their plane, they captured the pilot, we showed a moral high ground, released the file. So, one kind of good message came out that Pakistan is not a walkover. So, you will have to contend with that. And plus, this is that Modi is the suit that the thing is that Pakistan relationship should remain confrontational and hot. But not go out of control, now it's cold. Because at this point, the aim of his objective, which is to create a Hindu Rashtra and create a Hindutva-based polity there, is not fixed with friendship with Pakistan. For a while only, they started a back channel. I know it, but I don't want to reveal it. They started a back channel that we don't become a two-front situation with China. If China was with China, they said that जब याद है मई 2020 में चाइना के साथ लद्दाख में हो गया था उनका स्कर्मिश उसके बाद थोड़ी देर के लिए कुछ और उनके एनालिस्ट ने लिखा कि टू फ्रंट सिचुएशन बन सकती है सो दे बिकेम अ बिट मोर ओपन बट उनकी जो इस वक्त स्ट्रेटेजिक थिंकिंग है उसमें पाकिस्तान के साथ दोस्ती फिगर है नहीं कर और इस वजह से मेरे जैसे लोग जो हैं जो ये समझते हैं कि peaceful coexistence with all neighbours including India, especially India, is in Pakistan's direct national interest वो बड़े यानी जैसे कहते हैं ना कि bore हो रहे हैं इस बात से क्योंकि Pakistan को अगर आपने economic development लेनी है और को space create करनी है वो उसी वक्त होगी अगर सारे neighbours के साथ आपकी peaceful coexistence होगी and especially India. But if it doesn't happen, which I don't see now, chances, prospects, let's see what the result of the 2023 in 2023. So I think that if he has done the election, if he has done the election, then I don't know what will happen at that time. I'm also worried about the Muslims in India because they are taking the brunt of the Pakistan war. I'm also worried about the Muslims in India because they are taking the brunt of the Hindu frenzy. But let's see how it goes. Question? Your question. Yes. What is your view of this government? foreign policy. For example, at the start, they did this blender with Saudi Arabia, then this Joe Biden phone call thing. And then also, as you mentioned, they were at the very start, they were elected to engage Chinese as they were supposed to be. So what is your view of this government foreign policy at the, at the overall India? Look, my answer is this too, that Pakistan's foreign policy has always been, uh, has been a sum total 
of the inputs from all stakeholders, including the government. So I would imagine that any prime minister in Pakistan can single-handedly take any decision. And this doesn't happen. In foreign policy, it doesn't happen. There are stakeholders in there. There will be your intelligence, your security authorities, there will be a foreign office, there will be a little bit, analysts will be there. So, they all give up to each other in the beat. Because the foreign office is generally the melting pot. All the views come and you make a summary and make a prime minister. But the thing we have now is that our issue is not government. Our issue is cultural. In Saudi Arabia or any other country, we understand that we are now going to know us, we are going to know us, we are going to know us. This is cultural. It's not, it's not politics. Whereas every other country wants to pursue its own interests. हम क्या करते हैं? हम कहते हैं कि अच्छा जी ये कामयाब नहीं हुए, तो scapegoat होंगे. Scapegoat सबसे easy नजर आती है हकुमत, अरकुम कुछ लोगों को नजर आती है फौज, कुछ किसी को कुछ. So ये blame game में रहते हैं. The fact of the matter is कि जो चीज मैंने आपको यहाँ शुरू में अपने लेक्चर में कही that you have to do your own values in your life. In this way, Pakistan should also be principles-based and national interest-based foreign policy. I will give you a chance to 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 give you a chance. Will it serve any purpose? It won't. It won't. We got to find what is our national interest. And if our national interest deserves or peace with India, so be it. Whatever your national interest is. Now we say that we are a hub between South Asia and Central Asia and West Asia. Our national interest then is to adopt policies which promote not only North-South connectivity but also, but also East-West connectivity. So, we have to make our national interest in our national interest. And for that, I don't have to blame the game because it's a waste of time. My sense is that this foreign policy, if it is successful, it's a collective success. If it is failure, it's our failure as a, as a whole, as a nation. Can we take three, four questions together? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Sir, there is a certain someone who went to Moscow at the eve of Ukraine and Russia. So what was the kind of message that Imran Khan was actually trying to give to the foreign world by going there at the very eve of that conflict breaking? All right. I wanted to ask, like you mentioned, with our relationship with respect to America, there's a very is very strong people to people relations, yeah. right? But we don't see that a lot with China. It's more we talk about how the projects have been delayed, our industries are not working together on in sync. But what about people to people interaction? There's not much there, and how do you see the future of that? All right. Yes. Um, so I have more of a you know perspective question in the sense that we see that the Western world, especially the U.S. and somewhere in the Asia, India and China, is heavily engaging with foreign policy through the process and through the equipment of international law, which Pakistan is significantly lacking in. And our foreign policy, our foreign, because I think you know that international law deals in customs and we need to create customs over time, but our foreign policy does not have, you know, proper statements that are recorded, we don't publish them, we don't make customs for ourselves. So what do you think uh, is the role of international law in foreign policy in the coming years, and secondly, would we ever be able to build capacity in that? If yes, how? Very good. I think excellent. Any, anyone else? Jim. Uh, sir, do you think that uh, UNSC would play any kind of role in solving the Kashmir issue, or it's just on us, the bilateral India-Pakistan thing, to discuss it and solve it on ourselves? But I have given you two hours of lectures and I have not discussed it in a few hours. But anyway, I will try to quickly because these students have to go somewhere. So, I will try to quickly because these students have to go somewhere. First question was with PM's visit to Moscow and what was the message that Prime Minister was trying to convey. Listen, this visit had been arranged well ahead of the Ukraine crisis. So, postponing or cutting it short would have conveyed definitely a message that Pakistan has done it under pressure from the United States. So, Prime Minister went ahead with it and I think I support that decision. Because had he not done that, the, the other view would have prevailed and it would have been worse. Malaysia 
तो प्रेशर में नहीं गए सऊदी अरेबिया के तो उस तरह का अच्छा इंप्रेशन नहीं है आई थिंक दैट दैट वे आई 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 फील सेकेंड वॉज दैट पाकिस्तान डज नॉट वॉन्ट टू बी पार्ट ऑफ एनी कैम्प टू टाइम्स वी वर्क एंड वी थिंक दैट वी बर्न आर फिंगर्स एंड दो फोर दिस थर्ड टाइम अराउंड वी डोंट वॉन्ट सो वी विल मेनटेन आर रिलेशन विद चाइना विद रशिया बट इट्स नॉट अ जीरो साम for our relation with the united states we will maintain so i think that's the message that he was trying to convey it's not that we got whole big deal from from russia actually we didn't get get much koi optics ke alawa kuch bhi nahi uh the second question was uh, china uh, p2p yeah uh, absolutely p2p uh, with china is uh, is still in the infancy stage not even in the formative phase uh, we, uh, now our students are going there there are about 20 20, students, but वो भी आपको पता है कोविड की वजह से प्लस लैंग्वेज बैरियर इज स्टिल चाइनीज पीपल इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दी वी थिंक वी आर मच मोर इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाई दी वे वेस्टर्न थिंक और सुबह उठ के हम लोग सारे वो ही पेपर्स पढ़ते हैं जबान भी अंग्रेजी इस्तेमाल करते हैं सो देर फोर वी आर नेचुरली इनक्लाइंड एंड इन्फ्लुएंस इसी वजह से इसी वजह से ये पॉलिसी बेहतर है कि आप हर मुल्क के साथ इंक्लूडिंग चाइना एंड यूएस सिर्फ अपने नेशनल इंटरेस्ट को देखते हुए करें चाइनीज आर ए गुड एलाई टू हैव इन दिस इनफैक्ट बहुत सारी बचत आपकी चाइना की वजह से हो जाती है वरना आप काफी मसाइल हो जाते हैं तो इस वजह से चाइना के साथ पी टू पी बड़ा स्लो प्रोसेस होगा इट्स गुड टू टेक टाइम लेकिन इट डजेंट मीन कि आप पी टू पी विद यू एस एंड वेस्ट एंड यूरोप खत्म कर दे वो ये गलती ना कीजिएगा आपने बड़ा सही आपका तो परस्पेक्टिव का था कि रोल ऑफ इंटरनेशनल लॉ इन इन फॉरेन पॉलिसी इस पर अब बात शुरू हो गई है वी आर वेरी वीक एट इट एंड वी आर सिटिंग इन दी लॉ स्कूल इन देफोर इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि हमने हम ये समझते हैं कि दुनिया में ऐसे ही मतलब हो जाएगी चीजें ऐसे नहीं होती हैं और उसकी वजह से हमें अब जब हम पे जगड़ आई तो लोगों ने कहना शुरू कर दिया ये तो लॉ फेयर है लॉफेयर मीन यूज ऑफ लॉ अगेंस्ट अस तो ऐसा नहीं है मेरे ख्याल में आई थिंक लॉफेयर टू एन एक्सटेंट इज ए रियलिटी लेकिन अगर फाइनेंशियल एक्शन टास्क फोर्स बन रही है तो मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग हो रही थी ना आप कह रहे थे खुद ही कह रहे थे और टेररिस्ट फाइनेंसिंग भी हो रही थी तो जब आपने इंप्रूव कर ली तो आप ब्लैक लिस्ट से ग्रे लिस्ट में आ गए आज भी आप थोड़ा और इंप्रूव करेंगे सो इंटरनेशनल लॉ एंड डोमेस्टिक लॉ दोनों की एक रूल ऑफ लॉ की बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंस बनती जा रही है और मैं ये समझता हूँ आई जनरली बिलीव के अनलेस अर अनटिल हम ट्रूली रूल ऑफ लॉ नहीं करेंगे पाकिस्तान में हमारे लिए बहुत मुश्किल होगा हर कोई आगे हमें तंग करेगा वी गॉट टू फॉलो दैट और ये इसलिए आप लोगों की कंट्रीब्यूशन बहुत ज्यादा है इस पर आप ज्यादा से ज्यादा लेक्चर्स होना शुरू हो गए हैं रोल रोल ऑफ इंटरनेशनल लॉ वी मस्ट वी मस्ट पे फुल अटेंशन टू और फाइनली आपने कश्मीर का कहा कि यू एन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल देखिए इट विल यू एन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल हैज वॉश्ड इट्स हैंड्स ऑफ दी कश्मीर कि ये चैप्टर सिक्स में था चैप्टर सेवन में नहीं था इट्स नॉट आर ऑब्लिगेशन इट्स वॉलेंट्री और बहुत सारे वेस्ट के लोग ये कहते हैं कि जी ये शिमला एग्रीमेंट के बाद पाकिस्तान इंडिया का ये बायोलेट्रल इशू है और ये बायोलेट्रल डिजोल्व करें और इट इट प्रोवाइड हेज टू ऑल ऑफ देम टू से हम तो इन्वॉल्व नहीं होना चाहते ये आपका बायोलेट्रल इशू है आप खुद ही रिजोल्व करें और इंडिया दुनिया को कहता है कि ये हमारा बायोलेट्रल है तो आप बीच में मत बोलिए लेकिन बायोलेट्रल ये हमारे करता नहीं है सो इस वजह से और ये भी याद रखिए कि ये व्यू ये भी है कि कश्मीर कोई भी मुल्क लोग यार अपना दस मरले की जगह नहीं छोड़ते एक मरले की जगह नहीं छोड़ते इतनी बड़ी रियल एस्टेट इंडिया नहीं छोड़ेगा लेकिन पाकिस्तान के पास जो रियल एस्टेट है आजाद कश्मीर एंड एंड जीबी वो हम क्यों नहीं इंटीग्रेट कर रहे एंड आई हैव सेड इट वेरी क्लियरली इन माई बुक दैट पाकिस्तान शुड यू नो इंटीग्रेट जी बी फोर्थ वेट एंड ऑल्सो गिव द सेम ऑप्शन टू आजाद कश्मीर इफ दे वॉन्ट टू डू I know I've had debates with many people who do not share this view, but I believe that या तो कश्मीरी सारे मुतहिद होकर लड़ लें और लंबी फाइट करें उसमें शेख अब्दुल्ला की फैमिली भी आ जाए मुफ्ती सईद की फैमिली भी आ जाए आजाद जो बनना चाहते हैं जे के एल एफ भी आ जाए और सब आ जाए फिर तो मैं मान सकता हूँ So why are we on hold? And then they say, "Charles, um, why can't there be closer bilateral relations?" So I said, "It's the Kashmir problem, you know." He said, "Charles, what is the problem? Kashmir's decision has been made. Now we can take it. 
और नाम दे सकते मुजफ्फराबाद The then government, General Musharraf and his Hamnawa, they invited aid. So we saw the aid at the uh, convention center. I said, "Ji, how much are you giving? Ji, we are giving 200 million dollars. Okay, okay. So how much are you giving? Ji, 50 million dollars. Okay, just 50 million dollars. So like this, they went through. And when they were coming, they were looking at their own houses, just like Mughal Empire. I don't know what happened. I asked Sarban Shah to ask him for his advice. मैंने कहा यार सलमान डिड यू आस्क व्हाई टेक प्लेस इन इस्लामाबाद नहीं यार इट वाज इन मुजफ्फराबाद ओके मुझे जनरल मुशर्रफ वाज देयर एज द प्रेसिडेंट शौकत अजीज वाज देयर एज द फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर यू वर देयर एज द एडवाइजर टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर व्हेयर वाज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आजाद जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इट्स इन इंडिपेंडेंट स्टेट यार विद इन सो व्हेयर वाज द आजाद कश्मीर गवर्नमेंट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव यू नो व्हाट इज रिप्लाई टू मी वाज Yeah, we forgot. <laughs> you forgot. You're collecting a billion dollars of aid, and you forgot. So, in answer to your question, and to reinforce what the ambassador <laughs> said, na Kashmir milna hai mein. We be foolish. What we should do is to accept the reality that we do have. If we're prepared to sacrifice Gilgit, Balochistan, Gilgit, and Uh, Hunza and and and, which were all part of the original riasat of Jammu and Kashmir, we should go ahead with it. And if we're not, then go home and just do, you know, your homework. Sorry. Okay. Thank you very Finished. much. One more question. Okay, go okay. ahead. I have a question related to the Pakistan-China relations. At the very early stages, uh, after the independence of China, uh, and later on in 1959. Pakistan uh, like uh, Ayub Khan uh, met the Nehru and asked him to make a mutual defense, which has which is uh, directly a message against China. Later on, in 1965, uh, uh, Ayub Khan uh, uh, Chinese help asked Ayub Khan not to go for a cease war, but in spite of this, Pakistan uh, signed Tashkent Declaration, and later on, Pakistan also signed C20 Sandro. these all moves are against the chinese diplomacy right it could have harmed the pakistan's relation with the china but china uh, literally ignored all these moves to kya matlab ye wo ye keh raha tha ki bachcha hai galti kar lete hain nahi 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 main aapko batau ki na chini itne acche hain na hum itne pakke hain wo at that time Chinese were grateful that Pakistan was there their friend who was also liaising with the west unko to bada acha lag raha tha and and this whole process matured in 1970 71 uh, because both countries thought that this will be an ideal bridge between the two aur isi wajah se there are people like me who still feel that the chinese uh, pakistan can still play that role not as a mediator they don't need a mediator they are talking to each other directly but because both trust pakistan to enable to enable ab america ki taraf se trust kam ho gaya lekin china ki taraf se abhi bhi hai chinese aaj bhi hame ye keh rahe hain ki have good relation with united states aaj bhi kehte hain have good relation with india also this has been their consistent advice aur lambi soch lagti hai wo ye sochte hain ki nahi isse fayda hoga chinese don't want a disruption unka jo world view hai they were planning to have a super power status in 2049 when china will be 100 years old to thoda pehle karna pad gaya kyunki americans ne disrupt kiya aur kuch she ki personality aisi hai ki wo aage to abhi bhi chinese don't want a disruption they don't want a disruption by their trade relations they actually increased by 100 billion dollars from 2020 to 2021 during the peak of covid because the chinese think long term and for them their main prowess is economic muscle which requires them to spread out 
to as many countries as possible. Absolutely. Confrontation doesn't suit them. Absolutely. They were, for US it's different, but for, not for China. So the Chinese, you see the Chinese have now spread their wings, but name one country or locality where they have invaded. Hong Kong, it was negotiated. Well, they, we have exhausted China. Thank you very much, Judge Sam, for coming and enlightening us about your life experience and the lessons that you think that we all should learn from life and power, particularly for our young students. I think you. to live this Thank you very much. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before you all go, one small request, one small observation. There was a man in Islamabad who was walking down Avashai Avenue. And he was new, so he stopped somebody and he said, oh, on which side is the foreign office? <laughs> which the man looked startled and he said, well, I hope on ours. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that we have ambassador on our side. On our side. <laughs>